Hello, welcome to my channel. It's been a very long time since I filmed a video, so I thought I'd just do a quick little introduction about myself and what I'm going to be filming videos about because I think the last time I filmed a video was probably AS results day, if I remember correctly. Um, and I want to start up my channel again because I've got a lot of video ideas. Um, so I am 18 years old. I have just finished sick form about two months ago. And next week I'm heading off to uni, I'm going to UCL to study medicine. So my plans for what I want to make videos on um, include a applying to medical school series. So I want to make videos on interviews, personal statements. This video is going to be about um, the BMAT, which is a medical admissions test. I want to make uni vlogs, so my experience with fresh this week, moving in, um, just med school in general and UCL for anybody who's thinking of applying. And over the summer I went into railing, so I kind of vlogged a bit of my journey and I want to put those videos all together to make an interrailing trip vlog and um, also give advice to anybody who's thinking of interrailing on how to plan it and how to budget and decide where you're going to go, what you're going to do and all that jazz. Um, so, now that we've done that, um, I shall begin this video. So, this video is going to be about the BMAT, which is a medical admissions test for a few universities in the UK, including Oxbridge, uh, some London unis, and then also international unis. About 11 months ago, I set the BMAT at my school, and I have to say, it was a very challenging test. Um, it took a lot of hard work and dedication to revise for and when I was revising for it I didn't think that there were a lot of resources out there that were that useful in advising how to revise for it and also how long to spend on it and everything like that. So today I've broken down my advice from my own personal experience um, into six of my top tips on revising for the BMAT. So for anybody who doesn't know, the BMAT is broken down into three sections. So section one is more verbal reasoning, problem solving, it's very similar to the UK CAT if any of you have sat it. Section two is more focused on GCSE science, so biology, chemistry, physics and maths. Um, and both section one and section two are multiple choice questions. But don't let, let that fool you because they are very difficult questions. Section 3 is an essay writing section. So they'll give you a title um, or a question or something to respond to. And it's usually based on something quite ethical or scientific. And you basically have, and you have an A4 sheet of paper to write about um, your views on this and give a balanced argument. So tip number one is having a good time scale. I think with everything that re requires some revision, everybody has a different amount of time that they spend revising for some things. For me personally, I started revising about a month before I sat the exam. So I started at the beginning of October and I dedicated a couple of hours a day, maybe three or four at the weekend, depending on how much time I had. Um, and my main piece of advice is to make sure that you leave a reasonable amount of time to revise for the BMAT because you don't want to leave it until the last minute. Even though it's an admissions test and you aren't supposed to be able to revise for it um, and it's supposed to be a test of your knowledge in a way and just the way that you think you obviously can revise for it and you definitely want to leave enough time to um, build up the skills required for the BMAT but at the same time, you also don't want to peak too early. So I would not advise revising for this about two months in advance because then you're going to peak too early and by the time it gets to the exam, you're going to be completely burnt out. So leave a reasonable amount of time and make sure you factor in that you're going to have other subjects to revise for. You're going to have your A-levels and you also have extracurricular commitments, volunteering. Um, so don't be too over ambitious with how much time you want to spend but also don't limit yourself by only starting revision about two weeks before the exam. My advice is to sit a practice paper about a month before you sit the exam, so this will be the first thing that you do um, in revising for the BMAT, and from there you can kind of gauge your level um, and you can figure out which sections of the BMAT require the most focus. If your score at the beginning is quite high, then you know, okay, maybe I only need to dedicate an hour a day um, 
to revising for it but if your score is quite low I'd maybe dedicate a couple of hours a day maybe three hours a day um, at the weekend if you can afford it it's all just relative and it just depends on how you feel and how much time you feel that you personally need to invest into revising for it tip number two is to make a plan or a timetable um, so after I'd sat the first test at the beginning of the month um, for the BMAT, I decided to make a plan of everything that I wanted to get through um, and what I was specifically going to be revising for on each day. It's all well and good saying, okay, I'm going to revise for an hour on Monday to Friday. But if you don't know what it is exactly that you're revising, then you're not going to be dedicated to it and you're going to struggle to motivate yourself to revise for it. So. Um, I made a timetable, it's quite similar to making an A-level or GCSE or any exam revision timetable but write down on each day, okay I'm going to revise section 1 today and I'm going to revise verbal reasoning or today I'm going to revise section 2, I'm going to revise chemistry and these are the specific topics that I'm going to revise so make sure you have a clear structure and a plan so that when it comes to revising you know exactly what it is you're doing and you can just get on with it and it just helps you keep track of where you're up to, what you've covered what you still have to cover. Tip number three is to make use of any practice papers on the BMAT website. Uh, the great thing about the BMAT in comparison to the UK CAT is that it is a written test so it's a lot easier to revise for because you can print off the papers and then sit them rather than having to use lo loads of online resources like you might have had to do for the UK CAT. So there's a BMAT website where you can find loads of practice papers um, and they go quite far back so you will have enough time to do all of these papers and maybe redo some of the ones you first initially did at the beginning um, before you sit the BMAP test. In terms of section 3 which is the essay writing part, um, if you want to do practice papers for that I would write an essay and maybe give it to a teacher or a friend or anybody who you know that can read through it and give you some constructive feedback. Um, if you can't do that, then I'd write an essay and then read back over it yourself a couple of days later when you've got a fresh pair of eyes and just pick up points that you think are strong arguments and sections of it that you think are a little bit weaker and you could have improved upon it. Tip number four is to consider maybe investing in the ISC medical book. Even though this book is quite pricey, it is really worthwhile investing in. Uh, so there's 700 BMAT questions and this book is quite controversial because a lot of people say that the questions are a lot more difficult than the actual BMAT exam and I do agree with this but the thing is um, if you do harder questions in the BMAT, when you get to it, you'll find that the BMAT's easier. But do not be disheartened if you're finding these questions quite difficult because they are meant to be. Tip number five is to use the specification on the BMAT website for the science section. So for section two, as I said before, it covers questions of GCSE, biology, chemistry, maths and physics. So it's quite difficult to know what exactly it is you need to revise but if you use the specification you can highlight areas that you think are your weak spots um, and also if there's any subjects that you haven't taken to A-level then you want to focus on those specifically. So for me in my first year of A-levels I did biology, chemistry and math so I felt like those were kind of my strong points but then physics I hadn't done it since GCSE so I really focused on those points and it was great just to break down what exactly it was that I needed to revise and then I took out my old GCSE notes and textbooks um, and revised from those and you can also use BBC Bite Size because it is quite simple content but there is a lot of it so you, you want to get through it pre pretty quickly but also have a good solid understanding of it. Something else you need to bear in mind is that the content that they use for these science subjects in section 2 um, are from all specifications at GCSE so they'll use AQA, OCR, Edexcel um, so you want to make sure that you go through and highlight any of the sections that you might not have covered in your own exam board. Um, I found that, especially for chemistry, there was a lot of content that I hadn't covered because I'd done the AQA science for GCSE, but there's a lot of content from OCR and Excel that I also needed to cover. Tip number six is to read up on medical ethics. 
for section three of the BMAT, which is the essay writing section, you want to write a clear and concise essay which demonstrates that you know how to write a balanced argument. So I'm sure if you're applying to medical school you'll have read up on the four pillars of medical ethics. It's also worthwhile looking at some quotes from Hippocrates that you can maybe drop into your essay and reading up on topical issues at the moment in the NHS. You really need to make sure that you're not waffling. You only get one sheet of A4 paper to write down your argument. So it's not a lot of space that you've got and um, you want to make sure that everything you're writing is relevant. Make sure that the conclusion you're offering is a strong conclusion and don't offer any weak arguments during your essay. If you think it's a weak argument and you're not sure about it, don't include it. So I'm just going to give a brief overview of how I planned and wrote my BMAT essays. Um, so the main thing is that you only get 30 minutes to write these essays, so that means you have to plan pretty quickly and you need to get all your ideas down on paper really quickly too. So I planned for about 15 minutes, I wrote my essay for 10 minutes and checked through it in 5 minutes. Um, 15 minutes might be a bit too much time to plan, but when I planned, I wrote out literally everything so that when I was writing, I was literally just copying out my plan and I wasn't having to think too much about what I was writing. Um, in your first paragraph, you want to do a deconstruction of the quote which is given and the point being raised. Paragraphs 2 to 4 need to be your balanced arguments, so do uh, maybe two arguments for, two arguments against, and make sure that they are really strong, solid arguments which are backed up by the four pillars of medical ethics, they're backed up by a quote, or they're backed up by something topical which has happened in the news recently. Um, also make sure that you don't include your opinion too much early on, and even if you don't agree with both sides of the argument, you need to remain neutral when you're writing. So that's everything I can think of as my advice for preparing for the BMAT. Um, my main tip for the day is just keep calm and remember all of the work that you've put into it because it will be worth it. So thank you very much for watching. Um, hopefully my next video will be on either the personal statement or how to choose the correct medical school to apply for and my advice on narrowing down which med schools you're going to apply for. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you soon.